Hey, it's Cliff, and I really thought this week was going to be a good week, but it looks like it's not going to be with all of this news going on with Silicon Valley Bank. So let's go ahead and get into the news that happened this week. As many YouTubers have already reported on right now, Silicon Valley Bank has gone under and they're currently acquired by the FDIC. So I'm not going to hit on that. I think most people have already talked about that so they know what's going on with it. So that led us to the question of how many of these companies are actually affected by this bank going under. And of course, when it comes to my channel, a lot of people are invested in XRP, which is heavily utilized by the company Ripples. So the question was asked to the CEO of Ripple, Brad Garlinghouse, how they were affected by this bank going under. And he just responded about 40 minutes ago. So I'm going to give you guys the news. I got a tweet here from Brad Garlinghouse where he says, setting the record straight on SVB questions. Ripple had some exposure to SVP. It was a banking partner and held some of our cash balance. Fortunately, we expect no disruption to our day-to-day -day business and already held a majority of our USD with a broader network of bank partners. So yes, they were affected by the issue, but they're trying to downplay it to say that they can still function as a business. It's not really that big of a deal to them. He goes on to say, Obviously, a lot is still unknown about what happens with SVB and as is the case with many others. We hope to have more details soon, but rest assured, Ripple remains in a strong financial position. So Ripple is not going under. Ripple is fine. He also states that it's ironic that so much of what's happening as some of our companies scramble to make payroll highlights how broken our financial systems still are i.e. wires are still not 24 7 365 rumors led to collapse and the friction of moving money within a deeply fragmented system so just make a short explanation of this yes ripple was affected but it's not going to affect them to an extent of their company going under or anything like that and it does expose the need to have a fast cryptocurrency compared to wire transfers that are going to take forever for people to actually get their money and that's going to lead to payroll issues and fear in the market as people pull out their money and cause a bank run and everything like that so he is exposing that to the world. So just moving on from there, people are wondering how are we going to deal with the collapse of this bank? Because because obviously it's going to send a ripple through our economy, and that's something that we're trying to avoid here. But here's I got an article here. It says Feds could guarantee all Silicon Valley bank deposits in our report. So as most of you have probably been around since the 2008 crisis, we know that we bailed out banks before in the past. And this is just an article stating that the potential for that to happen is still on the table. And that's where people are kind of at on Twitter. They're wondering, like, should there be a bailout for this bank? Are they too big to fail? That kind of thing. What's going to actually happen to this bank? And what what's going to happen come Monday? That's, that's the thing that everyone's worried about. Monday, is the market going to completely tank? Probably because of this. A lot of fear is going on. But... That just leads to a tweet from Washington Post where they said breaking news federal authorities are seriously considering safeguarding all uninsured deposits at Silicon Valley Bank, according to three people with knowledge of the matter who spoke on the condition of anonymity to describe private deliberations. So people are just wondering what what is going to happen? What is what is the government going to do to protect this situation? Well, that was uh, yesterday. Today, this came out from Treasury Secretary janet yellen and it says silicon valley bank bailout ruled out the fed government is instead focused on addressing the need of svp depositors so she basically came out to address the rumors to say that no we are not going to bail out this bank we are potentially just going to let them fail now they they are coming up with a plan to how they're going to handle it but she wants her focus to be on the depositors of the bank so here's what she actually had to say it says I've been working all weekend with our banking regulators to design appropriate policies to address this situation, Yellen said. I can't really provide further details at this time. Yellen said she's working with regulators to come up with a solution for depositors without being able to provide specifics on how a resolution could be reached. So she's saying I'm for the little guy, pretty much, or not even the little guy, because these are big corporations at this point. but. She's pretty much saying that she's not going to bail out the banks, but somehow she's going to come back and help the people that actually utilize the banks. That doesn't make sense to me at all. I don't know what plan she's going to come up with. 
I'm completely dumbfounded to see what she's going to do. The only thing that I can think of is they're going to try and find some corporation somewhere, another bank or something to come in and assume all the liabilities from the Silicon Valley Bank. And they're just going to kind of absorb them as a company and take on their businesses as well. That's the only solution really that I can think of. But, you know, these people are supposedly smarter than me. So they're going to come up with some kind of solution. And I'm interested to see what happens and what they come up with. So Cliff, what did that do to the cryptocurrency sphere? Because this is a cryptocurrency channel, right? Well, USDC stablecoin falls to 87 cents after Circle discloses exposure to Silicon Valley Bank. So Circle obviously has a high amount of USDC. So obviously with Circle going under, that would cause a DPEG. And it says Circle says 3.3 billion of cash reserves backing USDC remain at stuttered Silicon Valley Bank. USDC, DAI, and USDD have all depegged from a dollar. And this is something that people have been kind of watching all weekend as USDC falls. They're wondering how far is it gonna fall? And it's just weird to think because people always thought USDC was the safe stable coin to be invested in. It turned out maybe that's not so true. People are, they always point to Tether, like, you know, you don't wanna be in, in Tether, you wanna be in USDC, but it turns out none of these stable coins are really stable because they're all affiliated with these institutions that can go under. They're not really a decentralized asset. So just to show you guys the tweet, here's the one from Circle. It says, following the confirmation at the end of today that wires initiated on Thursday to remove balances were not processed yet. 3.3 billion of 40 billion of USDC reserves remain at SVB. So they are completely screwed if something doesn't happen, if the, the federal government doesn't figure out a plan, this is going to be really, really bad come Monday. So what do they do in the process? Coinbase and Binance suspend USDC conversion as dollar peg wobbles, right? Obviously, as a dollar backed stable coin is depegging, these exchanges don't want to take the uh, fluctuation in price. So they just stop trading them. That's just how it works with these centralized exchanges. It says, after Circle disclosed how much its USDC stablecoin is backed by reserves held by Silicon Valley Bank, exchanges show caution signs. And so here's the tweet from Binance. It says, Binance has temporarily suspended auto conversions of USDC to BUSD due to market conditions, specifically related to high inflows and the increasing burden to support the conversion, right? Obviously, anybody that's holding USDC is going oh shit, I need to figure something out. And they're trying to trade it into Binance USD or something something safer, right? So the exchanges came in and they locked everything down. Binance goes on to say, this is a normal risk management procedural step to take while we monitor the situation. Yeah, they said, you're not gonna trade us a DPEG coin that's about to collapse on us. We don't want that shit. Scrolling down, Coinbase jumps in on it. They say, we are temporarily pausing USDC, USD conversions over the past weekend while banks are closed. During periods of heightened activity, conversions rely on USD transfers from the bank that cleared during normal banking hours. When banks open on Monday, we plan to recommence conversions. That is the most political answer that I've ever seen. Don't worry guys, nothing's wrong here. Just wait until Monday and we'll get your transactions approved. So let me just pull up USDC here. And honestly, it's not, it's not doing bad now. As you can see, it just jumped to 99 cents. So it's it's achieving its peg again. But as you can see, during this weekend, this is all the chaos that was occurring. It went down to 94 cents and was trying to push back up. And now it seems like we're we're about to hit a dollar again. But I just I don't know what's gonna happen come Monday. So we can say everything's fine now, but we'll just have to see what happens. So moving on from there, regulators face urgent tasks to stem spread from Silicon Valley Bank, right? The government is kind of thinking now how many companies were affected by this? What is the ripple effect that is actually going to happen? And what should we do about it? So what do they do? They decide they are going to have a urgent meeting come Monday. That's why I keep quoting the Monday date. They're hopefully going to go into this meeting around 1130 a.m. on Monday and they're going to come up with some plan that's going to secure the bank and not cause a ripple effect through all of these companies. Right. So just I'm looking for a bad Monday when it comes to the stock market. And when the stock market goes down, that means most likely the crypto market is gonna go down as well. So I haven't done a lot of research to figure out what companies were actually using this bank. There are some articles out here. There's one here from uh, Tip Ranks. 
and they quoted a few companies. I know Roku is a big one. They're saying approximately 26% of the company's cash and cash equivalents balance was in this bank. 26% for this company. That's not going to be a good Monday. Roblox is another one. It looks like they're holding about 5%. And there's there's many more. I saw someone put on Twitter there was a uh, long, like very long list of companies that are going to be affected by this. So expect bad markets when it comes to Monday. I'm just mentally preparing for it at this point. Like it's it's just not going to be good. I really thought this year was going to be a positive year. I thought this year was going to be one where we're going to be in the green at least compared to last year. Maybe we would just make up the returns of a around negative 20 uh, percent s p 500 last year but it doesn't look like that's gonna happen maybe it will maybe the second half of the year is gonna be great we're gonna come back strong but i i don't know i i see this causing a ripple effect and there's just gonna be chaos especially this coming week so just prepare yourself for it personally i'm not gonna be looking at it too closely i'm gonna go walk my dog um you guys see my last videos my dog is six months now he's 50 pounds so he's definitely a lot bigger than the previous picture that i showed on here so i'm gonna take time away from the market as it crashes to go and do something fun and kind of let off some steam so hopefully you guys have a great week thank you to my patreon supporter kevin and thank you guys for watching